Mme Kalapenrele Amla Nano Larnala, the Ladies Club, a talk show that features Mzansi's leading women in sport. We celebrate the game changers, the trailblazers, and all the women pioneers in the sporting world. Now, today, our conversation is about women who defy gender stereotypes and rise to great heights in the world of rugby. Of course, we'd like to hear your thoughts, your views. Please do get in touch with us on social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at sport at SABC at Le Mumutsuri. Send us your messages. Remember to also follow the hashtag the ladies club. Now, women's rugby is one of the fastest growing sports around the world. Wives, moms, women of all shapes and sizes are signing up to scrum down on the field. They are defying gender stereotypes and are reaching new heights in the game of rugby. Our special guest, Zintlinda Wonde, has reached great heights in rugby and is an inspiration to all the young women in South Africa. Let's welcome her to the Ladies Club. Zintle, good morning and welcome to it. Sisleva, how are you? I'm very good in your oh, green okay. and gold. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. It's really, really a great one to have you on the show <laughs> it's because really good to be here. Thank you've you. always loved sport. Mm. But I did hear that essentially <laughs> you thought you'd be a footballer. Oh, yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, firstly, when I got to high school, I actually wanted to play rugby at first, yeah. um, only to find that they didn't have, um, I mean, they wanted to play soccer. Mm. So they didn't have soccer as a sport. They only had rugby. And then... Did they have just, rugby for women? Yes, but it was just touched in. They yeah, hadn't yeah, yeah. introduced back, back, the yeah. actual contact sport. Yeah. So I figured, oh, OK, why not? You know, um, so I joined the touch uh, rugby. Then two years later, they introduced the actual... Um, contact sports and from there everything was just a flow because that's where I made the under 16s team I made the Sharks team and this is this is a uh, Sharks 2008 yeah that's two, 2008 and this is a uh, touch rugby there was still. no it was I first started with touch yeah. at school um, and then in 2006 that way I, I made the SA games I made the interprovincial games still and touch 208 no it's, it's now contact yeah 208, um, under 208, um, I did the Sharks uh, yes. women's team. And then from there, 27 to 2017, got invited to the Springbok women's team. Um, uh, that was sevens then, because they, we haven't played um, with the 15s team for quite some time. We yeah. only, the last World Cup we played was 2014. And then from there, they stopped it, because um, that's where they actually wanted to go back to to, to the roots, um, you know, to, int to introduce rugby to new players, mm -hmm. um, start uh, developing players from a young age. Uh, so from there, I, I did... Uh, the Springboks uh, Sevens team, uh, we have went to the World Cup with them 2008, uh, 2018. Mm. I've been with them for the Commonwealth Games. I've, we played the Africa Cup, uh, which we won uh, just this year. Mm. And I've also been to the one they played in 2017. Shoot, that's so. a mouthful. <laughs> that, is, that is a mouthful. And anyone that's hearing this for the first time, would probably think you've been in the green and gold for, since. No, not at all. It's been it's been quite a journey, I must say, because I didn't I didn't just make the team. It was really really hard for me to be part of the Springbok team. Like now yeah. with the sevens, uh, I remember I was so fat at once. I, I oh my gosh, <laughs> wait! I have to stop you there because that's what every single woman athlete that sits on that couch says. I have to stop you there. We're gonna continue with our conversation, but first let's have a quick look at uh, our inspiring quote in today's uh, uh, ladies club. We're Words are from the South African Sports Star of the Year, Tatiana Schoonmarket. And she says, I believe that you shouldn't wait for an opportunity. You should create it. And if you've got a lane, you've got a chance. Tatiana has enjoyed an incredible year in the pool. She's won a silver medal in the 200-meter breaststroke at this year's World Championships in South Korea, becoming the first South African woman ever to do so. The Turk swimmer also won two gold medals in the World Student Games in Napoli, Italy, and won two gold medals at the Tokyo World Cup. She kept off a great year with the biggest prize on home soil when she was named South Africa Sports Woman of the Year this month, as well as South African Sports Star of the Year at the recent South African Sport Awards in Durban. But we're about to go for a quick break. Before we do, let's also have a quick look at what's making news when it comes to South Africa.
African women in sport. The spa protests returned to competitive action against England in the spa challenge in the mother city. The three tests will be played at Belleville Velodrome from the 29th of November to the 1st of December. Looking forward to that one as we gear up, get ready to host the 2023 Netball World Cup. Remember, we do have a game changer in studio, Zintle. She wears the green and gold in both the shorter and the longer format of Rugby the Sevens, as well as she's the vice captain of the Springboks team. We found out about her choice in playing both formats of the game. How easy is it and where the passion actually came from right after this. The National Lotteries Commission is celebrating 20 years, 20 years of impact in changing and uplifting communities around the country. The NLC is committed to supporting sports and recreation to build a winning nation, funding 6.5 billion rands thus far, and that was to sports and recreation. National Lotteries Commission continues to be a catalyst for sport and social upliftment. Now we're joined in studio by a really great South African star, the Springbok Women's Vice Captain Zintle. Ndawonde, and she is our game changer today. Just to give you a little bit of a background, she is a firefighter who has established herself as one of the star players in the Springbok women's team. From humble beginnings, as Zintle grew up in Inanda Township and defied gender stereotypes when she played rugby for her province back in 2006 in the, the South African Games. Now today, she proudly wears the green and gold Springbok women's jersey and has also represented the Springbok women's sevens team. Her hard work and dedication have not gone unnoticed as she was named the Sport Personality of the Year Award at last year's Guazulu the Natal Sports Awards and it's been really an incredible journey that Zintle has had and she's here to share his story with us. For those of us that are joining us for the very first time who've missed the first segment, tell us a little bit about where the drive, the passion for in high school that you said, you know what, I actually want to play rugby. Um, they don't have the 15s rugby, touch rugby is there, um, and you didn't do netball and hockey because that was also at our disposal back yeah. in the days. When I'm the, uh, that type of girl who was always active from a young age, you yeah. know, like you, you're saying now, I, I work as a firefighter. I mean, that's, that's one thing I love doing. I like uh, physical things. I like contact stuff, you know. So when I got to high school, it was, it was just a matter of, because as well there's there was stuff that were going on as, as a young girl in growing up in a township yeah. girls getting pregnant girls doing this so i figured i needed a way out to actually get something to make me busy nice. you know so when i got to school i thought okay i'll take on soccer and then and see where it gets me and unfortunately soccer was not there so i figured okay let's touch rugby you know so i was of not only was i playing for the sport but i was also trying to avoid the situation around the the environment that we i was growing up in you know of which it turned out good and then that's where I realized my passion from there after making that uh, the two, 2020, 2006 SA yeah. Games um, my coach um, saw talent in me and he was like no Join, I join. Even my dad didn't want me to play because, you know, at, at a young, when you're still a young girl, you have to come back from school and, mm. and go home, cook, wash your uniform and all of that. So my, one of the teachers fought for me. It's like, no, this girl has talent. I believe in her. There's something in her, you know. Mm. So my dad would say, OK, I would allow her to go maybe once a week, you know. Mm. So there are a lot of challenges um, growing up and wanting to be a Springbok player, you know, but I fought through that because I knew what I wanted. I knew where I wanted to be and, and the, the passion that drove me and the things that I had, the decisions that I made at that age, they, they are the ones that actually got me here now. And what are those, some of those challenges, especially Kokasi and you say you're playing <laughs> rugby. It's just like rugby a girl a female <laughs> obviously if you're living in a township and then and you're, you're you're a girl or a lady and you're playing a male dominated yeah. sport so people will be like ah oh, yeah yeah so are you trying to be a man yeah, or something yeah. you know um are you a tomboy are you yeah. a lesbian i'm like no i'm, I'm a girl i'm a lady it's just yeah. that I, I play a certain sport it's yeah. not about um me being a lesbian i'm, I'm a woman and that's so, a sexual and, 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 preference it's got matter. nothing to yes. do with with sport. just because i play a sport that is more is a male dominated yeah. doesn't mean now i'm that person so i knew 
knew, like I said, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I was going for. So whatever the surroundings were, whatever people were saying about me, I, I ignored all of that and I focused on what I wanted to be and where I wanted to be, which is why I'm here now. And now let's talk about the two formats of the game. You wear your green and gold in both formats of the game. Yes. Um, was it easy for you to start, because you started in touch rugby mm -hmm. and then moved to the 15s, um, was it easy the, the transition from one to another and vice versa and now wearing the green and gold in both of them? <laughs> Not really, I mean, because rugby is rugby, you know, it's just the difference between sevens and, and fifteens that there's sevens players on the field and with fifteens uh, there's um, fifteen players. And yes, with sevens you obviously get a whole... Uh, Big field, and you only get uh, only sevens players, which means you have to be fast, you have to be quick, Fitter. you know. Yes, yeah. you have to be fitter than the 15s, you know. But it's always, I always say, it's always good to come from sevens and and and, and go and go play True. 15s because with sevens, obviously, you get to be more fit. So I would be really happy <laughs> at times when I'm at camp for the sevens, and I know I have to go to 15s because I know I'll be fitter than <laughs> everyone else. That's true. You know, but otherwise, there's no difference. It's it's just rugby. It's not very very often mm -hmm. that you get to wear the green and gold. We've only got a couple of athletes, but a lot of our female athletes, um, you'll find that they've got their national colours in track and they're also national colours in cricket. So how big of a deal is it for you to be able to say, I represent South Africa? in two different sporting codes. You can never describe. I mean, to represent your country, to represent your family, to yeah. represent your your workplace, it, it's one of the most uh, incredible things ever. You know, it's something I could never describe to a person if they ask me, how does it feel to wear green and gold? That's something that you, you have to feel in mm. order to understand it. Because if ever you see even the guys when they're singing there and they, they, they're standing, they're singing the national anthem, you know, it's one of the moments that you can never take away from them. So it, it's, it's so... It's... Yo, it's something I can <laughs> never explain to you. And how important has your family been? Uh, you know, very often we come from environments where, uh, and you, you get into the provincial teams, but the traveling mm. is quite okay. expensive and um, th there's not so many cake sales being done. <laughs> you know what I mean? How important then is that support from your family when all of this was happening at such a young age in high school? Luckily enough, with, with rugby, uh, we've had the best, um, when it comes to uh, rugby union, because we, we never used to pay for our travelings, even now, the under 16s and the under 18s, we we, know, we we don't pay. Even the wow. kids you get, you just have to be there, you know. And and so that's and that's a blessing because you don't have to. Like pay they don't for want travel. you guys to stress about you it. Like you need to be stressing the, about the, the medals. Yes, you don't pay for accommodation, the food, and everything. Wow. So that for me was was one of the things that made me be grateful and, and, and made me to value the opportunities that I had and, and you know, uh, explore them. Because, I mean, imagine if my mom had to pay for the flights, the accommodation. Mm. I don't think I, I would have made it if it was meant for me to pay those things. But with the rugby union, I mean, even now, the under-16 girls that we have, the under-18s, all of that is paid for. They just have to travel. They're given the kids the accommodation. And that's, and that's what we need. Because not all of us come from um, the same background. Not yeah. of us, most of us, in fact, come from very bad backgrounds and that for us means a lot. I mean, it's a, a child, a young child coming from Enanda, mm. traveling for the first time on a plane. Like, you know, it, it's something. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I used to point at the plane at times, like, hey, one day, yeah. one day, you know, and when it happened, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it's, it's just a life-changing experience. Yeah. yeah. And the first international competition for you, what stood out? Ooh. Yeah, the biggest one was when we played Kenya at uh, in Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, that's that's when I scored the winning try for for the Springboks Ooh. team to actually make the final. Yeah, yeah, it was the best. I mean, that feeling. It was just uh, we in a situation where. Uh, each one team needed to score because we were over time already. So at, uh, we, one team needed to score for us to to make it to the final, you know. And I remember, I don't know how I broke through there, but yeah. for some reason I broke through and. Uh, there was a time where the ref had to make a decision because they needed to make sure if it was a try or not because yeah. I actually slided onto the line, you know. So, and I was standing there when the ref had to make a decision. I was like, God, I know you're here. I know yeah, you're here. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a try. <laughs> and then she blew the, the, the whistle and she said it's a try and we made our way to the to the final. That was, that's one of the moments that I, I will never forget, you know, considering where I'm coming from and where, how I've wanted to be in the team and also, and also to make not only my family proud, but, you know, the whole 
uh, country, the whole department that is behind me, you know, my sports consultant, the mm. Mabenias, people who have been there for me at all times. So it's one of the moments that I will always treasure in my life. All right, and then she also wears a uniform. <laughs> She's a firefighter. I really oh, want to get into it. getting hot read. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anybody that wants to be saved, I would rather be saved by Zinda. I mean, looking like that. I always tell them to light up their houses if they want to see Oh, me. no, I'm going to be lighting up my house very soon just to be saved by her. We're going to take a quick break and continue with our chat with Zinda and Daunde when we return. Do stay with us right here. Mokana Lenya Bubid. The National Lotteries Commission is celebrating 20 years, 20 years of impact in changing and uplifting communities around the country. The NLC is committed to supporting sports and recreation to build a winning nation, funding 6.5 billion rands thus far to sports and recreation. National Lotteries Commission continues to be a catalyst for social upliftment. And talking of such, it's time to take a look at the movers and shakers who led the way for women in sport. And our trailblazer today is the retired women's rugby player and former Springbok women's captain, Mike Lisa Williams. At the age of 16, her talent stood out and she was selected for the Border Provincial team where she played interprovincial rugby. She was soon called up for the Springboks team and was included in the team that debuted in the 2006 World Cup in Canada. Now her leadership ability had not gone unnoticed and was named the Springbok Woman's Captain taking over from Nomsebenzi Tsotsobi. Talking of such incredible women, Zintle, what do they mean? What kind of... Um, Pave way have they led for women like you to then follow in and make it perhaps a little bit easier for you guys to sustain a career in rugby? They've set quite a solid base if you look at it because now at when they were playing at that time things have, have really changed compared to the days mm. So in Gogo it's different because they've set they've, they've went through a lot. Mm. Uh, they've they've they, they I remember they were talking about how they never had money for transport, uh, how they they used to camp maybe a day before they play wow. they, they play a game. So it has been difficult for them. And looking at the difference from there up until now, you can see that there is a bit of change, even though it's, it, it's taking slowly, sure. you know, but you, you, no one has ever built a building overnight, you know, because we also, as women, are still having issues now, but it's something that we, we are willing to, you know, step into and, and take time, you know, fight through it uh, up until so that the next uh, generation sure. is able to also have a uh, lack like of this so we can leave e e it pays not a solid mm. for those players that are coming in our under 16s as well as in our under 19s. Tell me about your career as a firefighter. <laughs> When I finished school, I didn't want to be a firefighter. Yeah. You know, I just I, I, I did sport management, so I just wanna I wanted to be um, involved anywhere around sports besides being a firefighter. Mm. So, like I said, being I'm, I'm the eldest uh, the eldest at home. So mm. being the eldest, I mean everyone is looking up to me. Um, I have to take care of my mom and, and and my little sister. So I knew I just needed a job, you know. So I applied at uh, at, at King Shaga International Airport uh, when they wanted firefighters. Wow. And oh, I must tell you, I nailed. It. But hey, why firefighting? <laughs> I'm sure there were other vacancies. Vac yeah, no. At that time, I just figured no. I mean, it's 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 firefighting. You know, it 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 has the physicality that I need. Wow. Not necessarily that I liked it at that time, but as now I got through, yeah. um, to, to to be part of the of the firefighters and everything. That's when I realized it's, it's this is really interesting. It's something that I'm wow. I'm passionate about. You know, it's it's saving a life. You know, you know, you leave work uh, the on that day like oh I saved someone's life. You you, you yeah. see. You know, so I grew to love it as I, I, I worked, as I had the people around the whole environment of of of, of being around the big cars, you know, rushing to... Can you drive to, that thing? Oh, yes. <gasps> and it's massive. We, we, it we've is got quite massive. massive ones. I know. You can drive it? <laughs> the truck is massive. Yeah, I know, yeah. But they're automatic, so... But they move quite quick and uh, they have a whole lot of water in there, so you can imagine, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it just became something that I, I, I loved, you know. I never thought I would actually really love. And what keeps, you, what keeps you motivated? It's my mom. My mom, uh, she always motivates me. I mean, she's, she's one of the ladies that, that 
I grew up with when uh, with my sister. You yeah. know, she was a domestic worker, mm. so uh, whatever she did, she did for us. So I know in everything that I do, you know, I put my I put God and I put my mom for, I put my mom second, and then the rest of my family. So with 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 that with her being there in every little thing I do, and 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 she has taught me one of the best things to to you know to believe in God. Mm. So with with them too, and 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 my little sister, of course, I've been able to actually conquer a whole lot of things in my life, you know, because I know there's certain things that I cannot do without praying for or without yeah. saying, hey, mom, it's really bad at camp. Yeah. My fitness levels are not good, you know? Yeah. And then she would be like, no, my child, just pray, relax, you'll be fine. Yeah. You know, so she's been quite an inspiration in my life and she motivates me a lot. And what has been some of your biggest fears in rugby? Oh, my or gosh. in your career? In rugby, oh, my gosh, breaking a neck. <laughs> Or even a tooth, for example. I know I've seen guys breaking their teeth. Because you've got like perfect teeth. You, you could pass for a model. Eh, yes. like, I'm looking at I your think, teeth. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're perfect. I, I, yes, I should, I should be, you know. Yeah, should, like, like a, a, a teeth, what, what model, you know? <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, the biggest one is always losing your teeth. I mean, even <laughs> I promise you, nobody wants. I know one of the girls had a big scar. Yeah, one of them when we were at we were playing Spain yeah. in East London just now, she actually broke her bone here yeah, and she had to be yo and it looks bad now because after that people will think hey were you fighting at a tavern or something <laughs> you know so <laughs> it looks really really bad but yo, you always fear there's concussions i mean those things are not those things are not mine i think <laughs> rugby i get so scared watching the spring box um lift the championship every time there's a tackle i'm here I'm here. I don't <laughs> and know how you. on top of you. Yeah. How do yeah. you? How, how? That fear. It's scary. <laughs> and you're not scared. I know, but it's not. It's not as bad as as you guys look at it on TV. You know, because obviously there's rules. So there's certain things that you can't do. How big of a impact has the Springboks winning the World Cup been mm. to you? Um, now that you guys are going through, because uh, now we're to talking the Cup, to the World Cup, yeah, in 2021. It's massive, I must say, it's massive. Uh, some say we're under pressure, but I look at it and I say, guys, it, it, it's not pressure at all. We, we have been motivated. A base has been set for us. Yes, True. of course, it's different. Uh, the guys have been playing for quite some time and we just gotten back to, to the system, you know. But with the games that we've playing, like we, we have been playing now when we play the qualifiers for yeah. the Africa Cup, we qualified. Yeah. We've had tests against Spain. We've, we have tests against, uh, against Scotland. I mean, those are the type of games that are actually giving us um, uh, a mirror to see where we are and what we need to work on and where we need to be. But otherwise, the guys did really well and, and mm. you could see how they trusted in their system. You mm. see how they trusted on each other. And we've learned from that. We, we saw how, how they trusted in, in, in mm. what the coach says, how they trust in working together. So it's one of the elements that we, we looked as a team and, and, and we saw that, okay, we need this, we need this in order for us to make it um, into the World Cup 2021. What brightens your day? Black coffee. Really? Yes. Like just <laughs> no honey, nothing. Waking up in the morning, just black coffee. That's the first thing. After that, after black coffee in the morning, I'm, I'm just there. I'm just there. Okay, and then when traveling, what is a must have for Zindle? Hmm. You have to, if you don't travel My with this. My speaker. Your small speaker. Because mm, I always listen to gospel in the morning and, you know, throughout the day. Yeah. So I always make sure I have it. So what's that, what's that one go-to song then? It's Udumi um, Uluandl. How does it go? Uluandl, <laughs> I don't know how to sing. Before we say goodbye, last words to the, the girl child that's watching and aspiring to be where you are today. Uh, never let your situation at home or situation wherever you are determine who you are. You can always be who you want to be, so long as you put in the effort, the effort so long as you do the right things, uh, I mean, the, the, the sky is the limit. So go out there, fight for what you want, and forget the situation. You were there for a reason, and you look back and say, now this is where I am because I've went through one, two, and three. Oh, well, thank you so much for just spending time with us. Uh, definitely so inspired. I love the fact <laughs> that you're saying, in order to get there, live like a springbok. 
So that when the opportunity comes, you, you are ready. ready. Yes, this level. Thank you so much. <laughs> you so oh much my goodness, me, absolutely but... loved it. That was a Zindle. They uh, continued to fly the flag in rugby, both sevens and fifteens. Also, a big congratulations to the six Proto Women's Internationals that are now participating in the 2019-20 season of the Women's Big Bash League season. It's a big deal. The likes of Mignon Dupuy, Marizan Cup, and Donay Fanirkaka. You guys are flying the flag up high. But that's all the time we have for you for this week. Thank you for spending it with us. Remember to go through to our social media platforms in case you, there's anyone else you'd like us to get in touch with, whether it's a trailblazer or a game changer. For SABC Sport on the Ladies Club, Mwena 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 Remember that greatness is earned but never given. Good morning.